Blessings to you. Welcome to Artist Impact. I'm your host, Jerry B. This show is all about great music of every genre. We highlight, feature, and critique singers, bands, musicians, poets, and rappers from our local region and from all over the world. Most you may have never heard of before, but we bring them right to your door to encourage them and to see how we can impact their career. Now, helping me to do this is our impact panel, or as I like to call them, my panel of love. These are all entertainment professionals, and what they're going to do is review and critique the two artists we are presenting in this episode and see if in some way, somehow, they can make an impact. Maybe, maybe not. But let's introduce today's panel. First and foremost is a good friend of mine who I've been hanging out with for, I don't know, several months or so. But this is his second time on Artist Impact. He is the CEO and founder of MusicSupervisor.com. Barry Coffin, what's happening, brother? I'm just happy to be here with you again. And I'm so grateful you are. And Linda, everybody knows this. This is my sister for real. I, I don't know how many times you've been on, Linda, but Associate Professor of Voice at Berkeley College of Music. Linda Bolero, how you doing tonight? Hey, Jerry, it's great to see you again. You know, I'm always glad to come. Always. And I appreciate you for it. And I got to tell you, I am at awe and in awe of this incredible musician. This is none other than George Hazelrig, the best jazz musician I've heard, bar none. George, welcome to Artist Impact. How you doing, brother? You can see Jerry B's my best friend, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for having me. So grateful you joined us, man. Love your music. And Barry, I got to tell you, man, in, in everything that you do to represent uh, artists and make sure that they know the most about sync writing, writing for TV and film. What do you find most enjoyable? Because you travel everywhere talking about this stuff. Um, I think I think giving people information that's impactful. Hmm. You know, I go to so many panels and I moderate a lot of panels and pe hearing people tell funny stories how they make met famous people doesn't help anybody. Right. You know, <laughs> I try to make sure that from every panel there are at least three things you can do that can affect your outcome. So to me, I, I like a lot of people help me along the ways and I like to, to help other people. You know, once somebody gives you some information, it can save you a lot of time and heartache. Absolutely. Well, you definitely help. I've seen you in action and I appreciate you and what you do. Thanks for coming on, bro. Thanks, Jerry. And Linda, again, my sister, I I know it's uh, the holiday season and you have a fantastic book. I think there's a new edition that's coming out, but Being a Singer is an incredible book. You want to talk about it just a little bit? Yeah, I have a, a couple things, but this is the, this is my published books, Being a Singer, The Art, Craft and Science. Yeah. So that's a kind of a tome about everything you ever wanted to know about yeah. being a singer. And it's written very accessible tone and you know this is the time of gift giving year uh, time of year that's gift giving it's a great experience gift to Absolutely. give someone rather than a material gift and the other the other one you're talking about was is my ebook that's online and i'm in the middle of making a second edition to update it for 2023 Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you being my sister. I appreciate you being here. We're going to have some fun tonight. And I got to tell you, man, George, when I said I'm in awe of you, I mean, every time I play your music, the Hazel Rig Brothers, it's just it just flatlines me every time. What have you guys been working on recently? Uh, well, we've got a new record coming out in the spring. Uh, which is a big secret, but it al aligns with uh, a legacy project uh, that uh, you know be an anniversary of the legacy project. So we're pretty excited about that. Oh, that's excellent. Well, I hope this won't be your last time on Artist Impact, man. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Yeah, thanks, man. Absolutely. So we're going to go over to Brooklyn, New York, and we're going to meet a bass player extraordinaire. Her name is Kentucky Marcus. And Kentucky, you have jammed out a song called Angels Christmas Rock. You want to tell us a little bit about the tune? Oh, yeah. Um, well, I spent most of my early years in Miami, Florida and Tampa, Florida. And every year they always had a lot of reggae that would come on at Christmas time and they would do all the reggae carols and it was the American carols that I knew but they would always do reggae mm. and I moved to New York and I'm listening 
listening, listening in my car, and there was weren't any reggae carols on, and it just drove me crazy. Wow. And I was passing by the Immaculate Heart of Mary Church, and they have almost 200 angels playing instruments in their yard all lit up. So that made me in absolutely lose my mind. I saw that for two years, and I said, I'm making a video, it's it. <laughs> and it's going to be a reggae song about angels. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, do you mind if we play it now? I think it's appropriate for the season. Can I do oh, that? I'd be so excited. Yes, please help out. Very cool. That was Kentucky Parkus with Angels Christmas Rock. Barry, what do you think, man? I just want to know what was in the eggnog. Come on, I can tell you had a little bit too much fun on that shoot. <laughs> Linda, what do you think? That that was a blast. I had a great time. Very cool, George. It's a it's a holiday party in three minutes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Barry, why don't you dig in a little deeper, my friend? Um, uh, so it looks like you you did this uh, a, a while back. It's sort of you dusted off every Christmas and kind of re re in, invite people to uh, to uh, listen to what you're doing. Is that basically what you guys are doing? Well, sort of. I mean, actually, we wrote the video. I wrote the video before I wrote the song, and I was going to just use a generic Christmas carol and and do the visuals. But um, my my partner, who did most of the singing, Sky Vega, said, you've got to write an original song, girl. And then it just popped into my brain so quickly. And I was, you know, jamming around on some jazz changes and came up with the jazz chorus, starting on the D minor and ending on the A minor. It's like nobody writes Christmas carols in minor keys except for uh, Hanukkah people. And, you know, what can you say? It's, it's not even Christmas. So. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that's interesting. D minor, isn't that the saddest of all keys? Ah, uh, well, see, it, 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 it ascends and you end up in a, in a minor key, <laughs> an ascending minor key. So I don't know, it's kind of hopeful. That, that, that was a Spinal Tap reference. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, no, that's, uh, that's uh, interesting. It's, that's the one great thing about holiday music is it's evergreen. You know, every Christmas you dust it off, put it out there. Kenny G makes a boatload of money every Christmas. Him and Mariah Carey, big winners. That's right. <laughs> yeah, well, mine is definitely original, that's for sure. I didn't do someone else's. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Barry. Linda, why don't you uh, chime in as to what you think? Uh, I had a lot of fun. I love the opening on the stoop. Just brought back a lot of memories of like old time Christmas songs. And it was really, I, I love that mix of um, stuff that feels old and new. And I felt that way about the other song we're going to hear later too. But um, what I, I loved about this was the energy and the excitement. And I loved all those wild chord changes. I um, I would love to hear more of a reggae emphasis in it. I felt like the reggae went, went out and back in too much for me. I would have loved to have you like just go to town on the reggae. But yeah. I wanted to also say about the vocals. I think that all of you have great, great voices and you all have experienced singers. But I think you can bring your vocals up to another level to make it just that more punchy and that more presence in your singing. So uh, I would I would definitely work on singing more when you're not doing your stuff and you're not recording and just using your voice a lot so you can get more uh, even more dynamism and all, all for all three of you. I noticed that you're you know a bassist and I love the sound of your voice matches your instrument. It's fabulous. And, you know, I worked with Mike Gordon for many years. I trained his, trained him for seven, eight years or 10, I guess. But um, it, it's so hard. I learned from him that it's so hard to sing while playing the bass, which is, I don't think, going on in the video. Obviously, it's a video recording, but I'm sure you have to deal with it a lot in real life. And uh, I know it's a big, big challenge. So you're doing great. Wow. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Very, very cool. And uh, Mr. Hazel Rick, sir, would you? Yeah, uh, it was a very exciting track and very inventive. And I and I'll I'll uh, double down on the chord changes. It's uh, refreshing to hear unusual chord changes in in more of a pop context. I think that, that the industry needs more of that nowadays. Um, I think that uh, I liked how you incorporated the, the Christmas carols. Uh, you know, in that reggae style, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I'm. I like how that you had three different singers that, you know, three different focal points. I think that helps a lot you know, um, just to keep things exciting. I will uh, agree with Linda about uh, kind of upping the ante on the vocal performance thing. To me, you know, I'm, I'm sort of more of a record producer and I'm coming from that, that side of things. And uh, for me, I mean, it's things that I would have just fixed in, in post um you know some tuning and timing issues that i think would have just polished the recording a little bit but uh uh yeah great very cool very cool well kentucky you've heard Thank everything you. that the panelists have had to say do you have any questions or do you have any pushback um i will say i appreciate the um information about the singing and the um needing to up upgrade the uh production value of it that was actually the first piece i produced from beginning to the end and did all the recording and everything myself wow. so um i appreciate the, the feedback from all of y'all and <laughs> oh my gosh making me sing is like is like you know pulling my hair out <laughs> i like to do harmony and have a lead singer but um it was fun doing this and it really was a blast and thank you for all the kind words and any criticism is always welcome i appreciate it well, that's, that's wonderful. So we're going to go from Brooklyn to Scotland. And this is Emil Delipi. Brother, blessings to you. How are you today? I'm, I'm okay. I just slept one hour after my work. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are a little ahead of us as far as time zone is concerned. But I tell you what, man, you uh, sent in a song shout out for Christmas that 
is, I think, just very poppy, energetic, and dynamite, man. What were you thinking when did you when you wrote that song? Did you write it or rearrange it or what? Yeah, uh, the concept is mine all, but the thoughts, some of the thoughts is from my wife and then from the help of uh, my childhood friend in now in United States. We just collaborate that song and then I said, put this, put this, don't forget the name of this, like, because the topic is for the Lord Jesus, don't forget to put that, I said, yeah. and then I, and my wife said, I like to... I, I like to make a song. I said a happy song, and happy song. My wife is watching TV, and then he said, "Shout out for Christmas." She was just standing like that. Oh, that's the title. And then I do the brainstorming on that, or the co commemorating of the what happened. Different, yeah. And we have snow. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> <And> everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because because before we're doing some ca uh, Christmas song in the Philippines, it's different cultures, and now in here, I've seen it's kind of magical here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, I also. I certainly appreciate the the song that you sent in. I really do, and and uh, I don't know how it's doing there in Scotland, but we want to introduce it to those of us in the United States. Is that okay? Yeah, yes, thank you. I, I love it. <laughs> I love them to hear that song.
man, that was Shout Out for Christmas from Emil Deleep. I thought it was a very energetic tune. But Barry, what did you think? I, I can't get over, the, like I said, seeing all the band members of different ages and everything. It kind of re reminds me of the Staple Singers. It felt like a multi-generational band, and I'd love to hear more about that later. Wow. Linda, what did you think? I thought the hook was great. I was that you know stuck in my head after I listened to it for a while, and I also love the whole idea of this village. You really felt like it takes a village to pull that off, and it, it was great. It was very infectious. You are correct. So, what do you think, George? Yeah, uh, great melody, nicely written tune. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go deeper than that, and Barry, really give it up, bro. Um. So, uh, yeah, like I said, go, I, I guess I'll continue on my on my trend. Uh, do you tour with that band? Is that was it a stu one time studio project or is is this the way that when we see Emil? This is this your typical band or does your band members change every day? Kind of thing? Yeah. That's my uh, previous band. The lead guitar is my previous band. And my childhood friend is the two other singers. And the whole band is my friend from the charts. The, uh, the, the uh, bass guitarist, keyboardist, and so I said, uh, "Come on, let's do this," <laughs> because he is the one who recorded the keyboard. The keyboardist do that, and then he said, "Kuya, it's like a respect." You want this record live, so you have an MTV. I said, "Yeah." <laughs> then, <laughs> We That's do that great. by, uh, we do that by, uh, what, what do you call it, a sampler? Yeah. Sampler and together. Yeah, that's great. Well, it was, it, it's great. That, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's it. Very, very cool. Well, Linda, why don't you uh, dive in? Do you have anything to say on the singer's end of things? Yeah, I, I, I love the whole idea of the song and I love the singing um, in a lot of ways. There are two thoughts that came into my mind. One is if you want the song to go more uh, for a commercial success, I would love to hear the chorus come in sooner. And and uh, I love the verses. I love listening to the changes. And when you go to the like the second section or the of the verse or what do you want to call it a prime section, I love it. But I think commercially, going to that chorus sooner is going to hook people in, and then you can drag them through more verses like later on once they're hooked, so to speak. Uh, but we want to hear that that chorus fast, soon, sooner when you're in there. But that's for live performing. I think for the video, it's fine. Or for even if you wanted to market it in a commercial way, you'd make a, a version that had um, that idea of the hook coming sooner. Um, vocally, I thought it was great, but I uh, felt like maybe the background singers were too shy, or maybe they just need more experience and more time. Because I felt like <laughs> the background singers could bring a lot more energy in their mm -hmm. voices and in the way they deal with the rhythm mm -hmm. so that was my my biggest comments i think that was a very very good critique well george you might as well pick up where linda left off what do you think bro yeah i can i can do that uh so okay the huey lewis intro love it the uh the whole beach boys vibe very cool um actually speaking to that i think what linda's talking about is is having more of the full background vocal harmony sound, you know, have it be more prominent. Um, so my two critiques were, that actually touches on one of them. Uh, I think you need less reverb on the vocals. I, I feel like it was washed out. And to right. sing well, you know, the, the vocals sound good. The, there's no reason to hide that stuff. Um, push it forward, make it more prominent. Um, the other thing was, it's a great horn line in the be beginning, but you're playing it on a keyboard. I want to hear horns. You know, I know you got lots of friends. Some of them got to play trumpet, man. Get, get the horns out there. Very, very cool. Well, I like it. I like that. And you know what, Emil, you've heard from all of the panelists, my friend. Do you have any questions of your own or do you have any pushback to what was said, sir? No, no, no. I, I, I learned from them. And thank you very much for what you have told us. 
because the message is very good of that. Absolutely. <laughs> no, you're right about that. It's a fantastic message. Well, panelists, don't go anywhere. We have to bring Kentucky back in because I have to find out from Brooklyn what is next on your agenda. Oh, well, I've been working on a piece that's called um, Carol of the Creeps, and I'm doing it sort of as a collab with an artist from the East Coast, West Coast. And um, we're gonna do a five song EP. And so two of mine and two of hers. The fifth one we're gonna bring in is, um, you know, I put a spell on you. Mm-hmm. And um, I actually have a, a, a an artifact from Screamin' Jay Hawkins that was uh, pretty cool. And um, we have very, a good we have good. A good music video for the beginning of the, of the, um, the, the Carol of the Creeps piece. Well, we look we look forward to hearing from you on that. And Emil, what's next on your calendar? What what are you doing as far as your career is concerned? At the moment, I'm just doing some songs, and now they're inviting me because uh, we are promoting the the album of Pass the Parcel Paisley. I'm included with that. I was introduced by Brian McFall and Richard Harrington, which introduced you to me. So we are promoting that for the charity fund, for the food for the pantry here in Scotland. So I'm happy doing that. <laughs> that's, yes. That's, yeah. That is fantastic. Well, I know that the two of you are going to go far. I'm so grateful that you are here on Artist Impact with us. And let's check in with the panelists. Barry, what's absolutely next for you, my friend? Um, Absolutely next for me, I am working on uh, two or three film projects. I've got a a really cool movie called The Man in the White Man that we're wrapping up. It's It's about a true story about a serial killer right by Kentucky in Florida from where you're from in like the Tampa Street area. Uh, and so it's a, it's a really interesting movie and, and doing it, uh, it's Legion M entertainment where it's, it's, a uh, like a, they're an incredible entertainment agency and their, their fans actually fund the films. They have 400 investors wow. that are movie. Fans. Very cool. Well, thanks again for coming on bro. And Linda, what's absolutely next for you? Well, I'm really uh, looking forward to the new year because I I like the idea of starting fresh again every year. I'll be doing a lot of the things I've done before, which is I teach a lot of online classes for singers and voice teachers. And I'm adding some new uh, courses this year to for habits and routines for creatives. That's absolutely excellent. Absolutely. And George, I know you and your brother is going to be very busy. What's next for you, sir? We're always very busy. Um, putting out a new record in the spring, uh, starting to work on on another one uh, with a trio. Uh, we've been producing a, an EP for an artist in LA uh, that's specifically for Apple Spatial Audio. Mm. Uh, and we're working with uh, Mike Miller, who is a, a, the top mix engineer in, the, in uh, Apple Spatial Audio in, in, in pop music. and. Uh, it is really exciting stuff. I mean, it's not like anything we've ever heard. That's fantastic. Well, I'm so grateful to each one of you. And I know you're going to be back on soon, George, Linda, and Barry. And that's going to do it for this round of Artist Impact. I want to give a special thanks to our incredible artist, Kentucky Parkist, Emil Delete and for our wonderful panelists. Now make sure that you support the artistry, okay? Make sure that you go to a show if you're in their area or you buy their music and merch. And if you yourself are an artist, please send in an original performance music video, submit it to artistimpact.armstrong.com and let's see if we can make an impact on your career. I'm your host, Jerry B. Thank you for joining us. And don't forget to pick up my new book, The Path of the Entree Musician, available on Amazon. That's going to do it for tonight. We'll see you next time. God bless.